In this video, we're going to be talking about setting key maps in NeoVim. Uh, so this will be the second video in the NeoVim from Scratch series. If you want to follow along with everything I'm doing, you can head over to LunarVim NeoVim from Scratch and you can check out the O2 key maps branch and you'll have the exact same setup that I have here. Uh, feel free to follow along with your own config. It's just a pretty simple video for the most part. So if you're just here to learn about key maps, you don't really need to have all this stuff if you don't, if you don't want to. All right, so let's talk about kind of where we are right now. So the video before this one, if you don't already know what init.lua is, if you don't already know what the Lua directory does, I recommend you check out the video before this one where I explain what that does and what those two, uh, what that file and that directory do. So for now, let's open up Lua user key maps. Okay, and you're going to see a file with a bunch of key maps, and I'm just going to explain all of these key maps. Um, and kind of show you how to set up your own key maps as well. All right, so to get started, you can see that I have different sections for different uh, modes, right? So we have like insert mode, some, some mapping for insert mode, some mappings for normal mode, and I'm just gonna go through, you know, some of these mappings and explain what they do. All right, so let's just start with the better window navigation mappings. Um, this is, I think, a pretty common thing that people kind of say it's a pretty I've seen this as a pretty common uh, key remap so let's uh, create a split window here and let's talk about how we used to have to move between splits before uh, setting this key map so to move up I would have to do control W K to move down I'd have to do control W J and same for left and right I'd need to do control W uh, H to move to the left and control W L to move to the right Instead of doing that, what I can now do is just control K to move up, control J H to move left, and so on and so forth, right? So now I can more easily move between uh, windows. Um, and I just think this is like, I don't know, a simpler way to do that since I find myself moving between windows pretty often and not really using what these, uh, what these mappings used to be, right? So remember that when you remap something, you're kind of overriding what that mapping used to be. So I recommend looking up what these keys do before you just kind of like uh, override everything and then you end up with some uh, kind of like super non-standard uh, key key sets and key maps, right? All right, so that's what these better window, that's what I just think is better for window navigation and those are some options that I have set or key maps I have set. So let's talk about the options that I have passed. So I have a function here called key map which takes an N. The N is uh, for normal mode. This is the key that we're going to be mapping, and this is what we're gonna be mapping it to. Um, so let's also talk about, well, let's first talk about the function here, key map. This is shorthand for vim.api.nvim set key map. So instead of typing that out every single time I wanna do a key map, um, I just kind of shorthanded it to this. Now to make it simple, I put key map, but you could just make it K if you wanted to, or even shorter than that, right? But yeah, we basically don't want to type this out every single time we want to, you know, set a key map. So we just do this shorthand. All right, uh, let's talk about options too. So no uh, remap here actually stands for no recurse map. Um, you're basically, you, you basically just want to set this. I'm not going to really explain too much about this. I don't want to really confuse anyone, but uh Basically, for the most part, this is the way you're gonna, this is an option you're gonna wanna pass pretty much every single time. And then also silent so that we don't actually see an output for our map, right? So it'll be, you can, you can experiment with changing this. Like if you set silent equal to false, you can see that sometimes you're gonna see like actually something show up in the output down there. All right, um, so that was window navigation, explaining the key map function here and explaining the options. Let's talk about your leader key. This is kind of like a, really important key. This is maybe the most important key. And what your leader key is, is, is essentially a key that you're gonna press before pressing a bunch of other keys to open up a ton of different uh, custom key mappings for yourself. So I use space as my, um, as my leader key. And you can see that this is basically how you're gonna do that. You're just gonna remap space to a no-op and then we're just gonna put a literal space as our map leader and local leader. I don't really play around with like a local leader. Like I don't, I don't really like use that as a concept really in, uh, in Vim. I basically just think of this as just my regular leader is space and I just use that. Um, so now let's talk about this mapping here. It's for normal mode. 
and we're going to say leader E and where leader now is the space character, right? So whenever I press space, that's actually leader. And so what happens when I press leader and then E, um, we actually run the command uh, lex and then 30 and then you see this CR in these angle brackets here and the CR stands for carriage return. And what a carriage return is, is just literally pressing the, the enter key, right? So let's talk about that before we actually show the leader. I'm just gonna do Lex, which is actually shorthand for Lexplorer, which is like left-hand explorer, right? So we're just gonna do Lex, and then we're gonna do 30 for the size of the explorer. And then again, carriage return is just pressing enter. So I'm just gonna press enter now, okay? And now I open netrw over here, which is an explorer to the left, right? And we can do the same thing just by running it again. We'll toggle it. Now, what we can, uh, what I'll explain here now is that now if I press space, which is my leader, right? And then E, I'm going to run this command. So I'm going to press space E and space E, and I can kind of toggle this explorer. So I'm just going to open up another file in here just to show you what it does. All right, so let's open up our options file and do that. And then maybe we want to come back and then open up our key maps file again. All right, so, you know, experiment with some other commands. You can just come down here, press colon to go into command mode, and you press tab. And you can see all of your commands, everything um, that basically is a command. You can kind of experiment with uh, maybe some mappings, that, some leader mappings you might like, right? A lot of plugins will also expose a ton of commands for you to use, and we're going to go over those in future videos. But yeah, you know, just like experiment with setting like leader F equal to something or leader B equal to, you know, something buffer related or something like that. Um, I usually like it to be kind of like mnemonic, right? Like if I, um, I don't know if that's the right word, but like if like leader E is for explorer, like if I did leader B, it would be for buffers. If I did leader F, it would be for files and so on and so forth. All right, so now let's talk about resizing. Um, it's kind of the same deal. So this is a command, right? Resize minus two or plus two, and then CR is carriage return. So these are commands that you can actually run, but for resizing, would you really want to go down and run that command every single time, or would you rather just like kind of uh, press a key to do it, right? So we have control up, down, left, and right to resize. So you can see I can easily resize things. If I jump over here, I can kind of resize up and down as well. So yeah. Um, let's see, actually, I'm noticing too now that actually this, this, this looks a little off to me. So what I think actually up should be would actually be plus and then down should actually be minus. So that's something that, uh, I just caught right now. And that's actually how I think that actually should be. So I'm actually going to update that now. Okay. Navigating buffers. So a buffer is kind of like. If you're coming from another text editor, uh, you probably can think about buffers more kind of like, it's not exactly correct, but you can kind of think about them like tabs. Now, Vim already has another concept for tabs, but I'm, I don't want to get too deep into it, right? Now, if we do B next, right, like this, and then I press enter, we're going to go to the next buffer, right? And you remember that I opened up this options file earlier, um, and now we can kind of, you know, go between different buffers, right? So I'll do B next again. There's another empty one. I'm not really sure how that one got open, but so on and so forth, right? Now we can also move between them now with uh, the S stands for shift. So what this will actually be is capital L and this will be capital H, right? So now I can move between different buffers just with capital L and capital H. All right, so let's talk about uh, this insert mapping. So you can see now we have an I for insert. And, um, so if we're in insert mode and we press J and then K really fast, we're back in, in, in uh, normal mode. So what I have JK set here equal to is just escape. So usually you have to press escape to go from insert mode into normal mode. Well, instead of that, if you just press JK pretty fast, you'll just go back in. So now you don't have to reach, you know, all the way with your pinky to escape or something like that. Maybe you have it mapped to caps lock, which I actually recommend too, but um, you know, JK is just like a way to kind of do that really fast. Now, also, you'll notice that like it's not exactly perfect. So like if I do uh, like J, it takes a while to like actually insert the J key, right? So that's something that you also should be aware of is like that's not always uh, ideal, but it's not going to like slow you down or anything. So like if I start typing like J and then start typing things, you're usually typing fast enough to where you won't actually notice that. 
All right, so visual mode. Um, this is for indents, so if you want to press like an angle bracket here to indent to the right, it'll actually hold on to that for you. What Vim usually does is, um, is it, it'll just do it once and then you won't be in this kind of like tabbing mode anymore, right? So this kind of just holds on to that for me and I, I, I personally like that. You could, if you wanted to, you could probably go like this and press dot or something. Actually, I guess not, but like, I guess there's, there's, I'm pretty sure there's other ways to do it, but um, this is the way that I like to do it. I like that it just holds on to it and then just does this. All right, so let's talk about moving some text. I'm not gonna undo this all the way there. Let's just move it back, yeah. So let's talk about moving text. Uh, so A is for the Alt key. So now if I press the Alt key and uh, I press, well, if we're gonna be in visual mode first, right? So we're in visual mode here like this. And if I press the Alt key plus J or K, I mean, I'm just gonna move all my text up. And if I press the Alt key and J, I'm gonna move all of my text down like this, right? Um, that's pretty useful. I've seen people like kind of ask for that a lot and it's something that you don't know you really want it until you kind of start using it. So yeah, so that's I think a pretty cool key map. Um, let's talk about this, uh, This what, what what is this, right? What is this, what am I remapping P to in visual mode, right? Um, what I'm doing here, and this is the last one I'll talk about. I'm not gonna really go too much further. This is basically the exact same thing as the uh, thing I just did earlier a second ago in visual block mode. But um, what I'm doing here is, is it's kind of subtle. So for instance, imagine I yank a key map here, right? And so now I paste key map. So if I then go and highlight ops and then I paste key map on top of it, what NeoVim actually does is it then kind of like yanks ops. And then if you go to paste again, what would normally be in that register would be ops. And I don't like that behavior at all. That really like, that, it kind of annoys me. I like to just hold on to what was, uh, what, I, what I'm still pasting, right? So that's kind of, um, that's kind of like how I, I don't know, I just like that better. So this is how you would achieve that. So that's this, that's this right here. It's kind of a little confusing to understand. It kind of, you would have to understand like registers and a few other things, but just know that that's what this key map does. And maybe I'll go deeper into registers in the future. Um, but yeah, so, so just, just imagine that if like you pasted over ops and then in your pasting from now on, you would have ops in there instead of key map, right? So we wouldn't want that or at least I wouldn't want that personally. So that's why I have this mapping there. All right, and the other ones are just like terminal mappings to move between windows, kind of like the same thing. And then, like I said, this visual block mode is basically just the only thing I'm doing with this is the exact same thing. So like if we are like this and then um, like with capital K and capital J, just like that, right? Okay, so um, now, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about when it came to like actual key maps. Uh, we're just gonna talk too really quickly about the init.lua file. So if you remember from the last video, I required user.options. Um, in this video, we're just, we're gonna kind of do the same thing. And you'll notice this will be a theme throughout a lot of the videos is now we're just gonna require user.keymaps. So where is that? It's in, again, Lua, then user, and then keymaps.lua. Uh, you'll notice that we don't actually, again, have to put, um, we don't actually have to put like uh, lua.user.keymaps.lua. You don't need to do that. You can just do user.keymaps just like that and uh, that'll require it. So if you didn't want these keymaps or you just thought something was messed up with your keymaps or something like that and wanted to test out uh, not having any of your key maps set, you could just comment this out and then restart any of them. All right, and I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's really much else I really wanted to show about basic like key maps and stuff like that. Obviously, you can get a lot more complicated with this stuff, and we will in the future when it comes to uh, plugins, like actually mapping, um, setting up maps for particular plugin functions that are given to us or commands that are given to us. And um, 
also way later on in the series we're going to talk about witch key which is kind of like this but with like a menu situation as well all right so yeah that's pretty much it um make sure to check out this repository here and you can go under uh it'll it'll be on the master branch as well as the key maps branch but if you go through here and you look for let's see where is it keymaps.lua you'll find all of the key maps that i showed you in this video um but yeah that's pretty much it if you want to support uh, my work here and you want to support the series and all, you can support me over on Patreon or GitHub sponsors. Make, to, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.